Helena's cell matches is Jimmy finally seeing what Reigns has been saying all along. Bailey getting the last laugh on Horse Hunting's Hell in a Cell. And Rollins is getting pushed on the floor. All that and more as we go over last night's episode of SmackDown and the official go home show on the blue brand for this Sunday's Hell in a Cell. Welcome to a brand new episode of Can We Talk Wrestling? And we are starting. night or Thursday night because it's Saturday on Twitter at around 10 o'clock it was broken that Roman Reigns versus Rey Mysterio and Hell in a Cell will not be happening tomorrow on the pay-per-view it is happening instead on Smackdown now the rumor going around is that Reigns didn't want to wrestle on Father's Day and he wanted to stay off to spend with his family which I totally respect but again I also kind of blamed WWE because they also love to do pay-per-views on Father's Day so we got this match on SmackDown instead. And Ray started SmackDown off in the Hell in a Cell, talking about how he couldn't wait to finally get his hands on Reigns and get retribution after what Reigns said to Dominic. Reigns went out there and said no matter what's going to happen, that Ray is just going to fall and be another victim. And Reigns is going to prove once and for all that no one can stop him and he is an unstoppable beast. But before this match started, we saw Jimmy. And although he has the same hair color now as, as Nick Jackson with like the red ombre type thing, which I don't understand why heel tag teams just love to do that, it seems that Jay is actually caving in. Jay goes to Roman and says that he feels that he should embrace his family, you know? They're representing the historic Samoan dynasty that so many people before them came to WWE to do. And he finally sees what Reigns is talking about all along and says, you know, Jay's not here and I'm going to help you today if you need it. And Reigns is just like, where is Jay? Like, I need Jay. I don't need Jimmy. I need Jay. And he talks about how Jay hasn't been answering his phone calls, his text messages, just tired to pull up to his house, and he still wasn't there. And Reigns goes, look, I can focus on this hell and so much, but you need to focus on finding your brother. Intriguing. Now, this match, though, was really good. Great back and forth. The, um, the commentators did a great job advertising the fact that this was Rey Mysterio's first Hell in the Cell match. And the match was really, really good, but obviously the winner was Reigns. And at the end, of the, at the end, when the match ended, Reigns continued to beat up Bray as Jimmy watched along as Jimmy held Reigns hand up in the air to end SmackDown. So what does this mean? Is Jimmy and Jay going to align with Reigns and turn heel? Is this just a trick for the Usos and they're going to turn against Reigns and turn face? I don't know. This is probably one of the most intriguing stories on SmackDown right now. I love it. And I can't wait to see what happens next. I do understand why Reigns is not competing this Sunday. But I feel like just because so many other fathers are competing this Sunday. Like, really? And... Um, for so many people, this is actually one of the only matches they were looking forward to on Sunday. And now it's like, <laughs> what can we look forward to? Ah! Ronald the Cesaro, which got added to the card last night. So, Cesaro was doing a sit-down interview with Kayla. And Cesaro was talking about, you know, how much he loved his business and he worked so hard to get here. And Rollins is ruining that because Rollins is making everything he's done in his career... I guess look like a joke. I think that was one he was trying to make because Rollins is just a mockery and he makes fun of him. He's this bad person. Rollins comes along and Rollins takes Kayla's seat and pretends to be the interviewer in his nice blue leather suit. Thank you, Troy. You've done a great job. So Rollins continues to say, you know, you're a disgrace. Everything you stand for is just misery and you don't belong here. I'm better than you and I can't wait to finally beat you on Sunday. To which Cesaro pushed him and he fell down. And that that's the buildup we have. I'm kind of shocked this doesn't have a stipulation, meaning that the three times we've seen this match has been no stipulation. So I figured, you know, Hell in a Cell or no DQ or something, unless they're going to add it tomorrow or maybe even today. 
But I'm excited, but it kind of scares me if Rollins doesn't win just because it doesn't make sense of why we're continuing this. I guess we really just have nothing for Rollins, which also scares me because his fiance was spotted at the PC, which is huge news. It looks like I was right. Becky will be returning July 16th. You heard it here first, but that's super exciting. But yeah, that's a match. I want to look forward to it because it's going to be amazing. But... Other than that, we crowned a new king on SmackDown. That is right. We had Shinsuke Nakamura versus King Corbin. Well, formerly known as King Corbin. And when Shinsuke was making his entrance with Rick Boogs playing on the guitar, Pat McAfee was standing on the commentary table with him and Cole's cell phone with, like, the flashlight. Which I guess was kind of funny. I hate Pat McAfee, but I guess it was kind of funny. The match was really good. Nakamura pretty much was in control the entire time. Corbin really didn't get a lot of dominance, which I was kind of shocked by because I feel like the last couple, like, before he entered this feud with Shinsuke, I felt like we just built on the fact that the end of days was so strong, and even though it wasn't used in this match, it was still kind of those things like, wow, like, we kind of built up Corbin, now we're not really doing anything with him. And he got anointed by Rick Books, he had the crown and everything, so I'm assuming this is leading to a King of the Ring tournament at some point. I know it's been rumored, and I also know that Xavier Woods entered himself in the King of the Ring. That hasn't been announced yet, but he is going to be in it. Because as he put in his tweet, people do this in the Royal Rumble, so why can't we just do it here and hope that there's a King of the Ring tournament? So that's something I'm really excited towards, especially since they're very much hyping this crown thing. It makes sense. So that's exciting. And then Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are wrestling because it was Commander Aziz and Apollo Crews versus Big E and Kevin Owens. And I will say, I think Big E's turning heel only because when Big E and Kevin Owens were giving a backstage interview, Kevin Owens went on a list of things of how proud he was of Big E. And Big E's like, oh yeah, Kevin, Kevin's good. Anyway, I'm so excited for this match. I was like, wow, okay, Big E, I see you there. Um, so Commander Aziz picked up the win and Zayn was on commentary, and they had a brawl afterwards, and so CDC guideline, Kevin Owens was basically coughing on Sonya Deville, and it had a pierce, like, please, give me Sammy, give me Sammy this, give me Sammy this someday. So, apparently, it was reported on Fightful that before SmackDown, like, about a couple hours before SmackDown, that match was supposed to be a Hell in match, but it got changed. So I really want to know why it got changed, because that's another match where I'm really like, wow, we've seen this a lot the last couple weeks, and uh, no stipulation. So I don't know. I mean, I'm one who thinks that the Hell in a Cell gimmick has been very much overused, especially because you have a pay for your name Hell in a Cell, and yet not all your matches are in there and we see it every year and like things like that are what buries things into the ground so example like on AEW we shouldn't see a stadium stampede every year because it just it ruins the excitement of it I shouldn't see a hell in a cell every year I should only see a hell in a cell when there's like a blood feud example why is Bianca like I understand why Bianca and Bailey are in a hell in a cell but like why is Charlotte and Ripley in a hell in a cell like why that's confusing to me so whatever but yeah that's a match it should be good Hopefully Kevin wins and we go in whatever direction we have next. Um, I believe this is also another pay-per-view where the IC title will not be defended. So, that's sad. And the US title, but James is hurt, so that'll slide. And we also have Bianca and Bailey. So Bianca cut a promo talking, like calling out Bailey, and Bailey didn't come out. And Bianca goes, you know, when you were laughing a couple weeks ago, when like they had all those screens, it reminded me of the time when I got bullied and when I got teased and it triggered something inside me that proved all those bullies wrong to make me the person I am today. And on Sunday in Hell in a Cell, I want you in a Hell in a Cell match and you can't run away and I can prove you wrong and I can prove why I am the EST of WWE. Bailey came out, beat her down, and held up that SmackDown Women's Championship tall and proud heading into the Sunday. I'm excited for this feud. I think that the build has been really good, but I believe this is going to be the last match between two of them, especially because it's in the Hell in the Cell. But I guess the question to me is where, like, there's not really a lot of girls on that roster who you can use, so I'm assuming the next feud's gonna be Carmella. Assuming that Becky isn't coming back next week, which I don't think she is. So it should be really interesting to see where we go from there. But I am looking forward to the match. Bianca and Bailey have really good chemistry. They've shown us since January when Bianca made the call up to the main roster. So I'm intrigued to see where it goes. But SmackDown was really good. Um, it does show that it is the better show than Raw. And hopefully we just continue this upward and I'm excited to see where all these storylines go. So 
yeah, so make sure to like this, comment what y'all thought about SmackDown, click that bell for notifications, and subscribe, and tune in after this video because my AW Dynamite review is up and we have so much to talk about, especially that opening contest.